Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Zadavari with the course of Mastering Substance Designer. In this course, we have some step-by-step -step lessons uh, from basic to advanced for working with Substance Designer and have some tutorials for creating some useful procedural materials in this uh, program. And uh, after finishing each lesson, we will update and upload it uh, in our YouTube channel and we can promise you the updating the videos from a lesson to, uh, to other lessons will not take so much and we will do it as soon as possible. So don't be afraid of that. And in this lesson, we want to speak a little about the procedural materials and the difference between them and the bitmap based materials. Let's assume you have worked with 3D Studio Max or uh, some softwares like that and you know V-Ray and you create a V-Ray material and in Diffuse channel you load a bitmap, for example a break bitmap. And uh, this material you are creating is a bitmap based materials because you are using bitmaps to create your material. And there are some disadvantages using bitmap based materials. Uh, let me show that. When you are uh, using bitmap based materials, uh, you are using bitmaps and bitmaps are pre-stored pixels data so they are very related to resolution it means uh, when you uh, load a map with a low resolution you cannot expect to have a material with high quality for having a material with high quality when you are using bitmaps you must load a high quality bitmaps for example a, a bitmap with resolution of 2k 4k or 8k or even more and uh, for these materials you need a large bitmap library and uh, for example a large bitmap library for bricks for metals for alphas and other things like that so, and searching between this library can be a time consuming process and uh, uh, will cost you a lot of time and boring process uh, to work with because you must search all your library for the map you want and uh, you cannot set variables and parameters for your materials uh, in bitmap uh, in bitmaps for example you cannot set a parameters uh, for your bitmap uh, to change the color of your bitmap whenever you want and you cannot uh, set a parameters for the age or for the dirtiness of that but in procedural materials you can a procedural material is a material that is created with mathematical algorithms and so it's not related to resolutions. It means you can change the resolution of the material whenever you want. For example, if your model is far away to the camera, you can uh, lower your resolutions and if the model is near the camera, you can uh, um, uh, set high resolutions for that. So for example, a 8K resolution for your model and uh, it's not related to resolutions uh, you can change it whenever you want and you can uh, set editable variables and parameters to your material depending on your needs but, uh, for example i created a procedural materials that i can change its color whenever you, i want or uh, changing the age changing the uh, amount of uh, dirtiness or dust on the surface of that uh, whenever i want i can do that with procedural materials and all the needs to a large bitmap library will be removed and uh, you can save a lot of time when you work with these materials because uh, one procedural materials can do uh, the job of, a, uh, of about a hundred of bitmaps and it's very useful in game engines and painting software like Science Painter because you can uh, have some codes for your uh, material features uh, or using a Substance Painter and change the feature of your material uh, for the parts of your model and it is very very useful and uh, let me show you example in 3D Studio Max uh, of a bitmap material and a procedural material okay I will go to 3D Studio Max and here I have a plane as you see uh, it's a simple plane and I will open my uh, material editor and here I have a bitmap based material it's very very simple I have just given the uh, diffuse brick map to the base color maps and uh, not more uh, as you see uh, the setting of my bitmaps uh, I have not any parameter for changing my map behaviors uh, for example, uh, the resolution of my maps is always fixed. As you see, my brick uh, has the resolution of 1622 and I cannot change that uh, uh, in the setting of my material. 
and if I want to add some features uh, for example like this or dust to the surface uh, surface of this material without the changing of the map I must give some blends uh, and using these uh, nested balance uh, can be so boring and time consuming because uh, Max always shows one channel at once in viewport it must be multiple times rendered for try and error uh, so that you can see uh, this material is okay or not uh, and this is very very boring uh, using these materials and imagine you are working with uh, for example such this material and your employers come and say I don't want this material I want the material to have another color I want the material to have another feature and you must search for another bitmap uh, and uh, you must see your large library to see if I have such this material my employer wants or not and these are all these advantage of bitmap materials and let's see the procedural materials okay here I have a procedural material for example I have a, a, a procedural traditional brick map for uh, East Asia regions here I have created and as you see if I clicked on uh, this material unlike the bitmap materials I have some parameters to control and make changes uh, in my maps uh, for example, I have some parameters to change my colors. Uh, let me give this material to the plane. Uh, let's select the plane and give this material to the plane. Uh, and as you see, okay. Uh, let me change the mode of rendering. Okay, let's go to render. I render my work as you see I have this material and this material is a procedural one okay I cancel that I don't need this and here's the parameters of the material I have uh, and I can change the map whenever I want for example I have the first color here that is uh, for changing the base color of my brake the base color these are the base color of my bricks here and I can change them whenever I want the overlayer color I can change the overlayer shape here uh, the color of this overlayer shape here and I have a checkbox uh, uh, here layered colors mode uh, this checkbox uh, show me if I want to separate colors for my base and shape colors or just uh, using the first color is enough for all the maps uh, for example if I uncheck this checkbox uh, all my maps have just one color first color uh, let me render that as you see and uh, when I want to change my colors I can easily do that for example I want to change this color uh, for example let's give it a light blue and give this one a dark blue and as you see uh, uh, the changes all right it's very easy to change the color of my material and I have an option here layered color age that uh, I can uh, control the uh, mode of blending colors with each other to form a new or age material for example if I move this slider to this uh, side I can have a new material here as you see and if I move this slider towards this direction my material moves towards aged as you see okay and I have some uh, uh, okay let me show you in viewport and I have some options here to change uh, uh, to change the shape of my maps here I can change the shape of these maps as you see let uh, me give uh, that uh, all right uh, and uh, okay let me change uh, these parameters to show you first okay for example if I uh, change the central sides and move it towards new ones
okay the central sides will change the sides of the central pyre a part of my shape for example 4 and central explode let me change that to show you okay and here are rect sides okay for example this one and let me render it again and move this edge and as you see I have another form of material and uh, this is uh, when I say uh, a procedural material can do the job of a hundred bitmaps uh, you can see what I mean for that and uh, some options here are uh, uh, some options for controlling the amount of tiling here uh, as you see and this is the power of uh, uh, power of procedural material and i will show you how to create such these materials in future lessons but before that we must learn how to work with substance designer so i think it's enough for this lesson and in the next lesson i will have a brief look at the interface of substance designer and uh, wait for the next lessons and I will try to upload the videos as soon as possible. And I think it's enough for now. Have a good time. Good luck.